Okay, let's keep it going. And now we're gonna get into the most recent type of plant to evolve, the flowering plants. And so uh, here just kind of showing two different types of flowers. Um, so flowers, part of my take, we're, this isn't like actually in the slides themselves, um, the cones evolve to have a male cone and a female cone. Flowers are both in one. They're male and female. So the way I sort of hypothesize about their evolution, I haven't done a lot of personal research into this, is that probably through a series of mutations that happened to the plants that have cones, some of the cones were merged and were, were had both the male and female cone kind of merged together. And that's just going to make it easier for them to fertilize themselves. So they made more seeds that made more plants like them. And over time, because it was a successful way of reproducing, uh, eventually they became cones that were both male and female. And then that was kind of like the predecessor of the flowers. And over time, those cones became softer and prettier and more able to attract insects and things like that and became flowers. So um, this one here the male and female parts are really crammed together whereas kind of showing the difference here uh this is the female part sticking up right here this darker piece and all these ones sticking out here are the male parts so this flower seems to have evolved to really not try to pollinate itself that it has it, the advantage here is for it not to pollinate itself whereas over here the advantage appears to be for it to to self-pollinate so kind of two different designs here for for the flowers Okay, so they have vascular tissues and organs. Um, so flowers can, you know, and, and plants that have flowers can get really big. I'm pretty sure all the forests, uh, the rainforests, those are flowering trees. Those are not uh, conifers. Uh, they're the first and only plants uh, to have flowers and fruit, which we'll be getting into those. And they also are the newest plants. But strangely, they have the largest diversity of all plants. So they're the most recent to evolve but there's more different types of species. So that seems to kind of contradict. You would think mosses, since they were the first to evolve, would have the most diversity of species when in actuality, the most recent flowers do. And that's because, well, and if we look at the charts, there's about 220,000 more species of flowers than the next largest group of plants. And that's due to pollination. Um, so pollination allows for really rapid and extreme genetic recombination. So you could get a, a bee or, an, or a bird or something, uh, fly for two miles or something and before, it, before it actually does the pollination process. So now we have trees spread really, really far apart or, or flowers that are spread really far apart that have now reproduced together. And so it creates a lot of genetic mixing. And if you get a lot of insects, there's gonna be even more mixing. And so because of pollination and all that genetic recombination taking place, there's just been so much diversification to the flower species, plus they're incredibly successful. So um, they're the most recent to evolve, but have the largest diversity of all plants. And by far, so if we look at this pie chart, it's not even close. Like um, if we combine the other three together, they come out to about uh, less than 27,000, if I'm looking at that correctly, or you know, a little over 27,000, something like that. So... There's hundreds of thousands more flowers uh, than the other three combined, which, you know, again, says a lot about that genetic mixing and recombination through pollination. Really makes a big difference for their ability to diversify and just how well they're attracting those insects. And mosses are the next ones, and they were the first to evolve by, I think, hundreds of millions of years, actually. So uh, flowers are just incredibly successful organisms, and obviously part of their success is that humans like them and take care of them. So flowers are the seed producing structures that contain both male and female reproductive parts. This is another one that really looks like it's not trying to pollinate itself. Um, and here the male parts are way outside the flower, kind of keeping the pollen away from the female parts which are on the inside. And then this one, I don't even know where to begin. I think these three are the female parts. Yeah, that looks right. And then down here, these kind of greenish yellow ones are the male parts, but that's just a really cool looking flower. 
So the male part is called the stamen, which is part of the flower that produces pollen. And here we can really see the pollen all over the stamen there. And the female part is called the carpal, which is the part of the flower that contains the ovary and the eggs. So what we see here is when the pollen lands on the carpal, and I don't really totally understand how this works. I think they're just really, really small cells break off of the pollen and start navigating their way into the ovary of the plant and fertilize the eggs. And then this eventually becomes a fruit. So then over here, what I try to do is, is ask in class, like, what does this look like it might become? Like, especially if you look here, this kind of very much looks similar to a famous type of plant that's associated with a certain famous holiday, if that gives you a little bit of a clue. And some people might be figuring it out. Um, to me, this looks like the stalk of a pumpkin and that this might transform into a po pumpkin or something related, like a squash or something. Uh, again, here's that really cool looking flower. So yeah, so yeah, I was right. This is uh, the female parts up here, the male parts there, and actually the pollen is facing down. So this is another one where it almost looks like it's trying not to pollinate itself, um, but they're really close together, so it's probably probably is able to pollinate itself, but just a really beautiful, cool-looking flower. Uh, here is the anatomy of the flower, so let's break some of this down. So the male part, the stamen, is actually made of two parts, the anther and the filament, and it's the anther where the pollen comes from. And then on the carpal, we've got the ovary, which I mentioned. Down here is like the eggs. Uh, the style, and then the stigma is what receives the pollen. I think you can see some other parts here of the flower as well. All right, and then eventually those, um, those, sorry, something just, <laughs> my TV, my TV was on pause and it just started itself up, so that's kind of distracted me there. Anyways, those eggs, when they when they get fertilized, they turn into seeds, and then the flower, which is pretty amazing, transforms into a fruit. Um, and so the fruit is a ripened ovary of a flower that contains one or more seeds. And so probably by now you know the difference um, between a fruit and a vegetable. Usually in class it's already probably come up, but if not, the difference is fruit have seeds. So here we see a tomato, something that's often referred to as a vegetable. Uh, cucumbers, pumpkins, and whatever, those are all, I'm trying to think of some other vegetable, what we usually call vegetables. Um, whoa, okay, somebody just honked right outside, <laughs> too. A lot of distractions going on right now. Um, so, uh, that includes the really, really hot, spicy peppers. Uh, the, you know, the spiciest stuff in the world, these hot peppers, they are all types of fruit. Uh, so it's pretty